Hi, this is T, and I'm here today to make some square and a square blocks that are actually going to be used for a storm at sea that my gill is using as a raffle quilt. And they gave us a packet of things. They gave us some paper piecing instructions that I have here. And then they want me to make four of these blocks. And then they gave me four center squares that are two inches. And then I have four three and a half inch squares and then four four inch squares. And on the three and a half and the four inch squares, I'm to cut them in half diagonally. So I have them stacked already. And I'm just going to take a ruler and slice these both ways diagonally. Don't have to be exact corner to corner because it's paper PC. Now these are my three and a half inch squares. Cut them both ways diagonally. So the one thing with paper piecing is that I always reduce my stitch length. So I am going to put that down to 1.5, maybe, well 1.8 is good. I normally sew with 2.0. So I'll do 1.8. And then with paper piecing, you have your markings on the front telling you the order of your piecing. And you actually are putting the right side of your fabric onto the back. So the first piece is this square, B1. That's my two inch square. Hold it up to the light and I make sure that I have a quarter of an inch all the way around this square. So I hold it up to the light so that I can see through it, which you can't see probably on the camera. Oh yes, you can, you can see. So I'm making sure that I'm a quarter of an inch beyond the lines. And then I will go ahead and place a pin And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and do that to all four of these units. Okay. Now I placed my pen so that it would not be in the way of where I want to place my next piece of fabric. So now I'm ready to add piece B2. So this is B1 and B2 is this upper triangle area there. So what I want to do is fold and get a line right here at the B2 area. I would normally use like a business card or a greeting card, but I left it in the other room. So I'm just going to take this and use the edge so I have a place to find my fold line. So I take this, place it here on the edge, and I'm hoping you can see that little bit of sea green sticking out. That lets me know that I do have enough for my quarter inch seam and I don't have to trim that. I just want to take this and put my next piece right sides together with this unit. So I'm picking up my piece and I just want to put it right sides together just like that. And then I want to flip the paper back. Just like that. And I don't have to have a pen, but if you need a pen, you can go ahead and put a pen in. I will just do it for the video 
just to hold it temporarily. So there I have a pin in it to hold it. And what I'm actually going to do is sew on the line from the right side of the paper and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch on either side of this line. So I'm going to extend that line. So I'll stitch it and then I'll show it to you. And the reason why you use a smaller stitch length is so when it comes time to tear the paper off, you don't, it's easier to tear off. And while I'm stitching, I'm going to go ahead and clip any thread tails so that I don't have those in my project. I'm going to remove this pin just to get it out the way. I want you to see the stitching that I just did from the back. And then here is how I stitch this line from the front. I started and stopped stitching right here. So I'm going to go back and trim this thread tail. And now I'm going to fold this up and press it. And I have a wooden iron right here. And when you're pressing with paper piecing, make sure that you, if you're using a regular iron, that you do not use steam. So that's my piece number two. So I just added this piece here, number two, and now it's telling me to go and add piece three. So I will rotate this around. I can now take my pin out because I it's now stuck to my fabric, so it's not going anywhere. So I want to go back to the front, get to line three, fold over on my board. And now what will happen is because it's sewn to the fabric, I just peel that peel the fat the two pieces of fabric away from the paper. And then I use the add a quarter rule. I have a small six inch one here. I lay that up against my paper. It has a ridge to catch it. And then I trim off any excess that I don't need. And so the only thing that was excess on this one was the point of the triangle. And so this is now how it looks from the front. And I'm going to add my next piece onto here. So this is how it's going to look before I start to stitch. So I have the B2 piece I added here and now this is B3. And again, you quarter inch on each side of the line. I'm going to cut that going to trim any dog any thread tails so this is how it looks before I flip it up and then when I flip it up I just press with my wooden iron And that's piece number one, two, and three. So I'm going to continue all the way around until I get to piece B5. with my five pieces sewn together. I'm going to trim my thread tails. So 
So after that, I need to go to number six. And number six is now going to be adding the larger triangles onto these edges. So I've got six, seven, eight, and nine. So this piece has nine pieces of fabric. So I'm going to start with piece number six. So I'm going to lay this at the line for number six, fold it back. And now I'm going to have a little bit more extra stuff to trim. So I'm gonna put my add a quarter rule right up against the edge. And now this is how much I just trimmed off of that. And I can actually do that to the two opposite corners. And then I can just sew both of those pieces on at the same time because they will not overlap each other. So I'm going to add a piece on this side as well as down here, I've trimmed for that. I just want you to see where my piece that I've sewn, I'm actually going into the seam allowance here. So I want to make sure that my stitching extends the seam allowance and on both ends of the stitching line. So down here as well as up on the top and then I've done the exact same thing over here. So now I want to just open those out and press them with my wooden iron. So this is what I have so far and now I want to go and do these opposite corners. Sometimes when you get to the edge of the paper and you go to pull it back for trimming, you will tear your paper. There is nothing that will hinder your project. So just ignore the paper ripping. Just go ahead and fold it into place where it should be and trim. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Let's see if I can turn it this way so you can see a little better. But I put my edge of my card on the line. I fold back to that line and then I disconnect my stitching from the paper and because I'm on the edge it may tear which is okay I just fold the paper back because I always want to keep my paper even if it's a little torn it's okay then I add the add a quarter rule which has a little lip here I put that up against my paper and it keeps everything nice and square. That's giving me my extra quarter of an inch seam. And then I can trim that off. Now I've just done that to both sides. So now I'm ready to add my remaining triangles onto these corners. And I just want you to see how my paper is ripped on the ends here, but that's not going to affect the final project.
Now the final step to paste paper piecing, which I'm not going to do because the gill don't want us to trim anything up, but I will press this with a dry iron and then I will turn it around and some people will trim to the outside dotted line, if you can see that this outside dotted line what I like to do is use this inside line and lay my quarter of an inch on this line and trim one quarter of an inch away because sometimes in copying these the quarter inch when you're doing reproductions can be a little bit larger so I will actually take a ruler and put my quarter inch line on the solid line and then I would trim off everything and then I actually take my paper out after everything is pieced together but I'm not going to be doing that in this video because again as I stated the gill wants us to just turn them in like this and they want to do all the trimming so that they know everything is accurate so that's it for how to paper piece and I will continue to make my other three blocks but thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video bye bye